you so much for your time on Healthy Morning. This is In Focus on Healthy Morning, where we bring you all the relevant discussions. Today, we are in Parliament, and we are privileged to be joined on In Focus by Honorable Paul Chumberima, who is the MP for Doma East in the Bono region. Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you very much, my brother. Let's start off with your assessment of the Electoral Commission's new CI that is in Parliament now. How do you see the CI? Is this something that Parliament must pass? And if we say Parliament must pass, um, I don't get it because clearly if it goes through the processes and meets Parliament's requirements, we have no option. It's a, it's a constitutional mandate that we must follow. So, but you know the minority raised issues with portions of the CI indicating that number one, for everybody to get a Ghana card, at least 90% of Ghanaians should get a Ghana card for it to be used as the source document for the continuous registration and also for the polling stations to be stationed at the district offices of the electoral commission, they believe that that cannot be right. I agree to some part of that you are saying. I think I've raised this issue at a point in time in terms of NIA meeting us at that point, especially where they have raised their concerns. And recently I've made, I've had some interaction with the media on it. The NIA must be able to help us to resolve the issues of our brothers and sisters on the other side. And it's, it's, it's a genuine concern. Um, I need a card. You must give me the card. If I don't have the card, I can't register. So you can't push me when you don't not give me the card. However, the NIE is telling us that per the census, the recent census conducted, by 2024, we have about 19 million Ghanaians being in a position to vote. That is the number that we will have. NIA at their last meeting with Parliament, session with Parliament, told us that they have issued, printed and issued 17 million cards. In other words, they have about 2 million left. Sitting there in their offices that have not been distributed. They have about 5,000, uh, 500,000 cars in their system they are yet to print. I mean, if you take this 600,000 and even 500, that's about 1.1. So, in other words, they have about 1.1 cars that they are supposed to work on it and issue it out. Meaning, we will have about 900 um, people left to be registered. In all honesty, there's no way we can get 100% for any voter turnout. <coughs> so we can manage with the 900. But with the NIA telling us we have over 600,000 cats sitting with you, not distributing it, I find it a bit difficult um, to, uh, uh, to agree with them and try to attribute it to money. They need money to do the distribution. How do you need money? I'm sure HSTV, if they come to you and tell you that, oh, we have this 600 people. Help us to communicate to the people where and how they can get it. I'm not sure you're going to charge them. Maybe not. Exactly. So I don't see why you are telling them that is money. That is not money. That is, they are failing to be proud. That people, Paul Chumberma, your card has been sent to Doma East. So find time and look Doma East District Office and look for your card. All, all Bono cards have been sent to Sunyani Coordinating Council. That every day we print out maybe one district. Region. Where we can go to have their cars. That is proactiveness. And that is, of course, my brothers on the other side. That um, we have to vote. And um, let's, let's, let's look at 
some of the constitution in terms of the voting rights and all that and that is what it is if you take um, 42 the right to vote is that of sound mind has the right to vote and is entitled to be registered as a voter for the purposes of public elections and referenda it's entitled to be registered it's entitled to so meaning you must be registered this clause gives us two letters it means the registration can be done if we have fulfilled the part of registration mm -hmm. So, you must vote. It's a responsibility of the government to give you the opportunity and make things accessible for you to vote. So, you see making everything. So, the UC must register you and then be able to make you vote. Those are the responsibilities of the government. Yeah. This article. Then it comes out, you must be registered. In your registration, you must be able to have the necessary documentation that government again must support you with. Exactly. With your NIA card. Exactly. However, in the process of that registration and that documentation, you must be able to make that move. That almost falls on you. So, so therefore, you can only get an NI card if I move. to NIA office to say I have my details here register me we agree that responsibility on the only the individual that's true so it's not on government yeah so if you go to NIA the register of what we are accusing NIA that NIA should be proactive and so then you get your card and then that card you take to you see that I am not qualified to read to be registered that onus is on you the citizen so as much as the government and the, the and the people and the EC has two responsibilities to deliver to register you and for you to vote, we also have the uh, the responsibility as a citizen to make the move to acquire the necessary documentation to register to be voted. That's true. So for you to be dis uh, to be disenfranchised or something, one must be able to say that I have deliberately decided to neglect my responsibility. But you know something of which is not the DC now. Okay. The DC is saying that if you go to 52, yeah. I mean, just let us get this. Uh, I think 51. Yeah. And then um, I think uh, is it 51? Yes. The Electoral Commission shall, by constitutional instrument, make regulations for effective performance of its functions under this constitution or any other law and in particular for the registration of voters the conduct of public elections and referenda including provision of voting by proxy so the electoral commission has the mandate to form rules and regulations so if the constitution says that you may and then the electoral commission thinks out of that you may he has not said that you can't use it but i want to rely on the Ghana card, I think it's within your purview. So the 41 that we are all relying on place that responsibility on both the citizen and the government. Let the citizen fulfill its part of which you are you are supposed to obtain your NI card. And let government also fulfill its part by registering and making votes. So we must all be able to fit in so that we run behind because easy cannot deny you your registration your voting if you have an eye card so here comes in the guarantee system what is wrong with the guarantee system you see the guarantee system for me has its own challenges because fortune very will grant for you and then you vote they said you should be granted for about six or i don't know the numbers too sure but grant for you then i live here i live i think yes you can't quit 
then I'm going to upload and you cannot get it right. Now, the NDC is saying that the NIA uses the guarantor system and they have a robust guarantor system because um, there's a commission, a commissioner of oath that you have to swear before you are you guarantee for people now the issue is that why not the ec employ such a robust system but if we are relying on the nia card then what it means is that we cannot go back on the guarantor system again you, you are getting mm -hmm. because actually just say the nia card has done it so meaning we can authenticate that you are true Ghanaian. So why should we? So for people that don't have the NIA card, why not use the guarantor system? No, but you see, why don't you have a guarantor? Why don't you need to have an NIA card? You see, what? my brother, we always want to compare ourselves to the Western countries. Yeah, like we do that. If we go to UK right now and you don't have an NIA, you cannot do anything. You, you are aware of that. I do. If you go to US and don't have SSN, you cannot do anything. So why is it that we are finding it difficult to appreciate that you are supposed to get a card that will make you a true citizen? Don't forget that, you see, you are talking about NHIN and drivers and all those. Maybe uh, myself, uh, we have a friend in the US comes to Ghana because we know we don't have enough money. We go to a NHIN uh, insurance office. My brother is here for about two months. So let me do an NHIN card for him or her. Or whatever a friend so that in case of medical accessibility i don't need to pay that doesn't make him a Ghanaian. or he comes in with international alliances and i go to nia that oh my this my and, and, and dearly that oh, this my brother will be here for about three weeks uh, he has international driver's license so i feel like i want to get licenses regularize some of the licenses in there that cannot make him a Ghanaian. But all that we are saying, that's what the only is that go and attain your card. And now the NIA is challenged financially to uh, register more people. Now they have uh, a cast. That's what I'm saying that in terms of voting, yeah. in terms of the voting pattern, yeah. if NIA is going by what you've said, they, they are not challenged. That's what I'm saying. You said by 2024, yeah. the people who are ready for voting are 19. Yeah. Now the 19 million, you've already issued, registered issued 17 million. Exactly. You have two million. There's two million left. You have over six hundred thousand cards you printed, printed in your office. You have five hundred thousand people you've registered in your system that you are about issuing the cards. So if you add the six hundred thousand, it goes more. I think it's six hundred forty thousand or so. But let me work within the six hundred thousand and the five hundred thousand. That is one point one. The one point one is left with only nine hundred voters, uh, nine hundred people. Do you see the minority and the majority um, finding some common ground, building some consensus, moving forward on this CI? I think, I think if NIA, that's why we are calling NIA, if the NIA is able to meet all of us in the middle, of course, we all come to a compromise. God, it's, as you said earlier on, it is the only way for us to vote. And that is why we are give us the card. And we will go and register and come and vote. If I don't have the card, how do you expect me to go and register and vote? So I'm sure if the NI is able to help us even distribute this 640,000 and is able to issue out your 500,000, I think we'll come to a common ground on this. And uh, one thing that I've been thinking about between uh, the majority and the minority is that uh, the majority feels that the NDC is always opposed to every electoral reforms. Do you think so too? You know, don't forget when we're moving from opaque to transparent buses. They opposed it. When we're moving from black and white um, picture to color, they opposed it. When we're coming, moving from uh, biometric, and we wanted to bring biometric, they opposed it. Of course, they oppose every electoral system. But my brother, you see, I don't see why they oppose because when the voting pattern comes in and the people said, I've changed a certain government, no one can do anything about it. No. Think it's our time we know that the will of the people cannot be changed in any form or shape. When this country, Afarija was appointed by, I think, the previous government, Rennes and all that. But he announced Kufo's presidency. Charlotte Ose announced Akufado's presidency. So what shows that it will not be if the people want to change? If the people want to change, nobody can do anything about it. That's true. So I think the fear 
that somebody can manipulate the system and change i think we should go take it out you know and and and, and for us strengthen our system our system because immediately you question the integrity of our institutions you are weakening them that's true so for me i will uh, uh, plead with my colleagues that listen nothing will change the will of the people if your co-father is doing fantastic the pp government is doing fantastic but if they come back and feel that oh no yes you are doing fantastic we've seen your roads we've seen your schools we've seen all that your thing but we think we want to change it you cannot stop that so i will entreat them that they should not be afraid that somebody is going to concord somebody is going to do anything they should do the needful they should do the right thing they should let's come together to help build ghana and if Ghanaians want to reward them and appreciate them they will do it not what sometimes Ghanaians are descending that's why somebody come and tell you that we have short memory and that sometimes you come a bit like you are you sure about that but Ghanaians they really sit and they know what what time is it at any time mm -hmm. that's that's a very important call to make now let's move to issues of energy mm. there's this school of thought that this current government hasn't added any megawatts of power to our national grid how true is that if you come to the the power sector it's a bit um it's 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 um it's an expensive area so it takes longer time for certain things to materialize so if you think about power and you have not added any megawatt it took them a long time to establish a lot of power capacity and generate a car power and all yeah. now all those things are producing and we are paying excess because of take or pay issues agreements how do we now want to add on to it because you have excess power how do you add on to it now we talk about oil this all your discoveries documentation were signed way before some of them were coming if you take air if you take 10 if you take um, um 10 projects before signing they discovered it even if you take um um um, um, um some coffee and all those things the discoveries were were having done so they came to even just implement agreement i'm sure in in our time um, he and I have discovered new bread, the block four. Mm -hmm. um, how do you call it? Springfield had made discovery. But before you start drilling it, probably let argue me. Maybe we are not here. I may not be here. The president may not be there. And then another president will be sitting in and they will start drilling those discoveries that were done now in, in, the, in this time. It doesn't mean that somebody has not added anything because you don't just come in and, and add it. A lot of the NDC will complain that you don't appreciate the efforts of John Mahama when he was president, especially because of the work he's done in the energy sector. Every say appreciation. Acknowledging his work. We do acknowledge. We do acknowledge that they, you see, during the time of doing so, they put, they, they tried their best, even though they couldn't solve it, but they put they in a lot of... They insisted that they solved it before see, leaving office. You see, let, let me, what, what they did, yeah. is exactly what I've just told you. They put in a lot of capacities, yeah. strategies to curtail it, but it was resolved when they were not there. Explain that so, to us. So, as I was saying that, Kufuo issued out um, I mean, how do you call it? Commission companies to go through exploration and, yeah. and they discovered oil. Yeah. But the drilling of oil was within the NDC's the region. Mills time. Yeah. So you, you say that they can say that they are drilling oil. Yeah. As they say. But really and truly, they were not the one who commissioned the exploration. So that is to say that yes, you so, might put in the infrastructure, but yes. the real generation how, came in yes. somebody else's Putting era. Put it together for it to be implemented. Yeah, started somewhere. So you can put the system together, but how it will work? That so, is that so, is to so, say, so, Mahama never stopped. So, so 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 exactly. So that is why, in their time, trying to make sure that we stop doing so, they will bring anybody who comes with any any power, power idea, agreement. So oh, come on board. Anybody comes, come on, oh, come on board. So it's, I always say that I will not all the time maybe try to say that, I mean, what they were doing was wrong or not. It was, it was, it was someone who was eager to solve a problem, yeah. but did not know how to go about it at that particular moment. So anything that will help him solve the problem, 
he thinks he has to clinch on it. So, ah, he tells me, oh, Paul. Paul comes here and says, oh, I have power somewhere. And that, uh, oh, Paul, bring it, bring it, bring it. Then Paul, you sign agreement with Paul. You tell us, oh, my brother, I mean, actually has something somewhere. They, oh, yeah, bring it, bring it. It's so granting, has some. They did not coordinate it because the idea was that we want to solve an issue. So even though they were putting all those things together, the issue was not there because coordination was not properly done. So Mahama never solved them so before Don't leaving office. I mean, we've said it countless times. Now I'm saying that they they put in the, the infrastructure. The infrastructure. Yeah. They were in a position. I mean, they were they were eager to solve, to solve it. it. But putting the thing together to get it solved done. Was, was done not, was done under, under this the, current yes. government. That's what I'm saying that we have a lot of IPPs, and I always say that um, as much as it's it is it is a tool on our finances, uh, you I always say listen. The idea was not to put a toll on our finances. The idea was to solve an issue that will stabilize our power issue. And it ended up in that way because it was not properly coordinated. So, I get it. So if they have coordinated well, they would have known that signing um, take or pay with maybe ye and I, which was an, an, an agreement of gas price, which really was out, out, out of out, it, 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 was, it was it was really out of the market price they would have known that no we don't need to add any more any on to it but they thought yeah and i said we this one oh no yeah and i come 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 so what is your government doing to make the electricity and the energy sector holistically more robust oh but you know in COVID times yeah and in this Ukraine and Russia, that the people say we have you emphasize, but you cannot talk about the global politics and global economy that don't mention these two. At the NDC was asking why would COVID and the uh, Ukraine war, Russia Ukraine war, keep other countries and land only in Ghana and also ah, give us a deficit, no. a deficit of 15 points. No, which, which country did they keep? Uh, they, they made a, a reference to Cote d'Ivoire. South Africa. But they're talking about our, our budget deficit. No, but you see, you see, we're not talking about budget deficit. We are talking about how art is working. Nigeria. challenge are we in that challenge to get back to the energy discussion i was asking what investments you've made to make the energy sector more robust as we speak yeah we are changing the western corridor okay the middle corridor okay the coastal corridor all the town lines you know the main lines wow we are changing all of them this is to enhance smooth flow of electricity for power wow as we speak between 2021 to 2022 we've commissioned about three substations this is to ensure that, listen, power fluctuations and all that doesn't come in. As we speak, car power was moved to uh, middle bed when it was sitting at type not doing anything. Now, the middle bed, we cannot stabilize that power situation in such a way that you cannot have that power fluctuation or that we can be able to have all those things. Those are the things. If we talk about even in terms of the energy, uh, in terms of the energy sector, uh, the petroleum sector, rectifying PAs, making sure that PAs that the running, the, uh, the how do you call it, the licensing runs that were, were done, and we need to negotiate the PAs and all that. These are all going for us to get benefits from Ghana, for, for Ghana. So clearly, in terms of the energy sector, a lot that have been done in the okay. renewable sector. Uh, exactly. Okay. So I want, I'm thinking that now that you say we have excess power, should we still think about getting re uh, renewable energy? Because energy, because energy transition. Yes, that of course, as, as, as a country, I don't think we will rush in, in with this energy transition, but we must think about it. <laughs> because one day we may. And 
as your, uh, the MPP government invested so much in this renewable energy. Oh yeah, if you take we power, yeah. we is now having a 50 megawatt energy that is operating, that is put, I mean, put on the grid. Mm. There is a 100 megawatt um, uh, uh, plant that has been built in Yendi. As you speak, a 4 megawatt has been built right now, one way that is going to be added on to it. Uh, Chachado, which is one, is also coming, is also going to come out. So there are lots. That they have added on terms of renewable energy. I mean, even um, 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 Jubilee House. Yeah. Uh, Jubilee House, about seventy percent of Jubilee House uh, power is 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 is, is by um, solar. Solar. Wow. So 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 yes, there's a lot that we have. And let's let's touch on nuclear energy. Where are we? Which phase are we with nuclear energy the as a country? The last time that the committee, our committee met with the minister, and all, I know they 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 come up with a policy. So they are now agreeing on which. Uh, which models you know they have a smaller size and a bigger size okay um, i think the approval is for the bigger size but it i think they've gone far uh, somewhere in a way to start and all that so i think they've gone far on the declining i'm gonna go for you uh, for me it's a policy that has just commenced and i'll urge my brothers on the other side that they let's give positive um, outlook to the good for your policy we we, we battered e levy and it came back to bite us we don't need to do that to go uh, uh, go for oil policy let's see how we can all support it and push it and that's i, I think it's, it's something that it will help us the national chair chairperson for the ndc johnson has uh -huh. addressed uh party faithfuls yesterday at upsa mm -hmm. and uh, he the they teamed that particular engagement the true state of the nation and there they mentioned a lot of issues and they discussed a lot of issues saying that we are not in a very good state of the nation right now and that things are expensive um, goods and services inflation all over the place and that corruption and over borrowing are the cause for our, our state as it is now I, I think listening to my my senior uncle you know we are from Bono, so yeah. there are lots of that I need to be measured my my way. But I think they didn't say anything. Nothing at all. God, he he made reference to all the things that the president said, but couldn't counter, couldn't give an alternative. So clearly, if we say the truth state of this, I was expecting them to give a counter, I was expecting them to give an alternative. But they just made statements and allowed it to and they said that's the truth state of the nation. And for me, I thought it was mm, uh, it was totally it was a shame because I mean I respect him and that he should not allow people to push him to do such things. It's very unfortunate. There is a lot of issues. One of them is that businesses and banks are collapsing and relocating. You think that is not when happening? Business has collapsed. Which bank is relocating? And and can they give an example? I mean, you see what which bank? Then you mentioned a bank. They said. Youth unemployment has increased according to the 2020 population and housing census. What do you say to that? Ah, youth unemployment, clearly, of course. I mean, with the with, with the COVID coming in, a lot of people are at home, <laughs> and we we even that we are moving towards the tech level. So yes, we are now coming up. But don't forget that the government has put in place the new start, of which they are still going through the vetting of documentation. Um, and all that to make sure that about thousands of youth are put back on their on their feet through the youth start policy. So these are things that I mean solutions have been found for. And now they compared prices of goods in 2016 to prices of goods now. Now, for instance, Kenke in 2016 was 50 pesos and one city. Now Kenke is four cities and five cities. They compared no, bags of cement, see, sacks of maize, and all that. In 2016. Yeah. So let's look at even you can bring from two, so 2008 what was the price of KK and what was the price of KK in 2016. Yeah. However, in 2015 2016, when they created an issue, the issue which for me was internally generated, borders were not closed, ports were not closed, people were not asked to stay in their homes, workers were not stopped from working. But they were even compared 2008 prices. 
to 2015, 2016 part of things. To them, to people where they buy, if in a few years, they, they, they would have told us not to sit like this. Borders were closed. Ports were closed. People were not asked to work. No, nothing was coming in, nothing was going out. And you want to compare that regime to this. How? How do you, how do you compare it? They should, honestly, they should tell us how much was taken in 2007, 2008. And then compare it to 2016 KNK. When they had borders open, they were taking revenues. People were going and out, taking money. But at this point, they said, you can't bring anything, you can't bring anything out. They stop everybody and want to compare. And I'm, I'm, this is really ridiculous. So you think the true state of the nation the was presented by the president, the president in parliament? Time. We are in difficult times, we are in challenging times, but we have revived the economy before and we will do it again. It is a collective thing that we must put our heel together so that we can achieve this. Not trying to compare, do certain comparative analysis, which really doesn't match. Honorable Paul Chumberima is the MP for Duma East and I am so privileged to have you on all these issues and the explanations are on point and uh, we are grateful that you had time for us and I also congratulate you on being the best MP, first time an MP for the year 2022. Congratulations to you sir. No, thank you, thank you very much. I mean, now I think it is a collective, uh, I mean, uh, achievement because clearly if you won't come and interview me, and I will not talk. Nobody will hear of me. So clearly, it is your uh, achievement. It's my achievement. So it's a collective thing that I, I always think that we, we must celebrate it together. Thank you so much, Honorable. Thank you, too. This is In Focus on Healthy Morning. And my name is Derek Oembuche. Stephanie will be on We Stay Alive.